hopefully super short video on cloning versus forking, something that I struggled with when I first started to deal with Git and GitHub. So the way I look at it today is actually quite simple. If it's a repo that I don't want anything to do with from this point on really, I clone it. If I'm part of the repo in some shape, way or form, then, um, and I might be a contributor, then I fork it. So you might be in a class, you know, you might be in a in a coding class and you might be working with a group. Um, so there's a good chance you're probably gonna fork the repo. Uh, but a lot of times cloning is the, is the better option. So, uh, all right, let's get to it. Here's a repo that does not belong to me that I wanna, um, that I'm using for demonstration purposes. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fork it. So fork it happens all on GitHub. So GitHub right here. Um, everything here happens on GitHub. So you just click on the fork, uh, change anything you need to change here, create fork, and there it is. So now I have the code on my GitHub, not on my computer yet. You still have to use clone to get this code to your computer, okay? All right, so now let's do the cloning. All right, so here goes, here's the original repo. Not my, it's not, this is not my account, this is somebody else's, and I'm gonna clone it. So I'm gonna go click on code, and I usually use the HTTPS protocol. I'm gonna copy the URL, go to my terminal, and do git clone, paste the URL, and if you want, give it a name, otherwise it will pick a name for you. Um, so I'm just gonna call it uh, react demo, if I can spell. Okay, and now it cloned it. So if I do CD uh, react demo, there's the code. So um, just one thing to be mindful of when you do a git remote v, which shows you the uh, remote location of this git folder, like what it's connected to on GitHub, you'll see it's still connected to the original repo, not yours. So keep that in mind. So even though you cloned it and you thought you created, you did create a copy of it, if you try to do any sort of git push, git add or whatever, or, or git push to be to, to be precise, it's still can, it's, it's gonna try to push it to this, right? Or uh, more specifically this. They're both the same in this case. Okay, so now um, let's create our own repository. So if, uh, and push the code that we just cloned to our repository. So go to your GitHub, your account, make sure it's not obviously somebody else's, <laughs> the, um, and you just uh, click on new repository, give it a name, uh, React Demo. I'm gonna leave everything the way it is, create repository, and it will give you instructions on how to push up stuff um, to this repository. Uh, I'm actually gonna quickly, our, our situation is slightly different because we need to change the repository name for what it is to this new one. So this is the URL of the repository that we wanna push it up to on GitHub. It's our, uh, rep uh, it's on our account. So I'm gonna Google change remote origin git and I'm gonna grab, uh, sorry if I'm going too fast. Right here, I'm gonna grab this this command right here. So git remote set URL and then go back here, grab the URL, paste it, and that's it. So now if you do a git remote uh, dash v, it's now linked to yours. So if you do a git push origin and then this URL, if you will, first one, the second one, the same in this case. Um, oops, uh, git push. Uh, let me see. Think of, yeah, git push origin. Yeah, there you, you. Wow, I am so dumb. Git push origin main. I think it's, uh, in this case, it's main, not master. If main doesn't work, try master and vice versa. Okay. Pretend like all this stuff up here didn't happen. 
Okay, so it's pushing it up. Uh, it's done. So if I refresh this page, voila, I got the code uh, on my repository and on my local computer. Okay, so just real quick, I like this page right here. Geeks for Geeks has a good uh, breakdown of the difference between forking and cloning. And really the part that's important is this little comparison box right here. Forking is done on GitHub, cloning is done using Git. Forking repository creates a copy of the original repository on your on our GitHub account. Cloning a repository creates a copy of the original repository on our local machine, so the computer that you're on. Uh, changes made to the forked repositories can be merged with the original repository via a pull request, okay? Again, if you're part of a team, there's a good chance this part comes into play um, if you're trying to contribute back to the original source code. Uh, changes made to the cloned repository cannot be merged with the original repository unless you're the collaborator, collaborator or the owner of the repository. Forking is a concept, cloning is a process, I'm not sure what the hell they, that means, but um, yeah. Forking is just containing a separate copy of the repository and there's no command involved. Cloning is done through the command git clone and it is a process of receiving all the code files to the local machine. Feels like forking is also a process because I don't know, uh, that's the part that's confusing. All right, cool, there it is, uh, forking versus cloning. Um, if you thought that my instructions were useful, it helped you understand forking and cloning a little bit better. Uh, and just and just to reiterate, I usually clone. 90% of the time I clone. Uh, forking, I, I rarely have to do forking. I think school was the only time when I had to fork. Um, so yeah, um, but if you like my instructions, if you thought that they were useful, um, I'm a coding tutor. I'm also a professional software developer uh, working full time, but I tutor on the side, so if you need help, uh, just uh, reach out to me, uh, go to aventutor.com. In the meantime, feel free to subscribe.